All right, everyone, welcome to the first, uh, the, the kickoff for the Technical Steering Committee of the Baseline Protocol um, community. Uh, we're very, I'm really uh, excited to see everybody here. It's a great team. I'd like to introduce uh, Jory Burson, who is our OASIS. Um, Jory, you have a thing that we, uh, do we a convener or a <laughs> well, secretariat? I'm a <laughs> the I'm the program manager for the Open Projects program, um, but I, I think y'all can probably think of me more like your concierge for the, your community. Um, and I work for Oasis. I'm here to help you make sure that you have all the resources that you need, um, and also to make sure that we're abiding by the governance set out and in our Open Standards organization, so that everybody has a uh, seat at the table. Thanks, Jory. Um, I, I did put together a, a, a workflowy. Um, if anybody has uh, violent reactions to workflowy or doesn't can't get on it, um, it seems to be the lowest barrier I have to putting together a, agendas usually, um, and they're easy to share. Does anybody um, have any issues with uh, workflowy as an agenda tool? Got it. And by the way, uh, thanks for demonstrating my favorite thing, Eric, which is uh, chat. Uh, nothing better than a good chat log at the end of a meeting like this, and it helps with blocking. So I hope everybody uh, uh, utilizes that. We have uh, one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 13, 14 folks on call. Um, we have a couple of guests. I see that uh, Joe Lubin is here. Um, and Dan Burnett, and I think, yeah, those are the two. So everybody else is a member of the TSC, and we have a couple of guests. This is a, a public, uh, this will be publicly um, uh, recorded and then and publicly distributed on our YouTube channel. Um, Jory, that's, that's correct, right? So we can yep. do that. Um, if there are anything, if there are any discussions that uh, someone feels strongly about not be, being public, that might not be the best forum for it, um, uh, because we, we have transparency is is, is essential. Um, we just we didn't make it public. Uh, I didn't invite the public to the meeting for obvious uh, um, logistical reasons, but um, we will make it public hereafter. Uh, okay, so short introductions, uh, just name, company, role, and and a brief intention. Uh, that is, what do you intend to get out of this? There's a, there's a big principle that we've asked everybody to consider um, coming in here, which is don't do any work for this unless you can draw a straight line between what you're doing and your avarice right? <laughs> or what, you know, what, what's going to be good for your company. So enlightened self-interest is essential uh, for maintenance of the community over time. So be great to, to you know, say a, you know, a, a line or two about what your intentions are. What do you want to get out of this? Um, I'll, I'll go through, I'll, I'll just make it easy by walking through the tiles I have on screen here. So Eric, you're on top. You want to say a few words? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Eric Bravik, uh, I'm CTO of Core Convergence. Um, uh, I think I want to get a couple of things out of this. Uh, a, I'm, I'm just in love with the open source process in general, and I, I like sitting on this type of, of um, organizational structure just to keep in tune with that. Uh, more directly, uh, I do a lot of work in the security community, um, and I'd like to see baseline rolled out along some use cases uh, specifically in that security community. Um, and uh, I think it has a good place in, in some use cases and some products that I'm thinking about. So uh, that'll be my first vector on this is, is security. Thank you, Eric. Um, uh, uh, let's see who's next here. Uh, Nate. Yep, Nate McCurvey from Splunk. I lead our uh, blockchain and DLT efforts at Splunk, and we're, we're excited about Baseline for multiple reasons, but um, at Splunk, we believe that every problem is a data problem, 
And this technology is going to allow enterprises to share data in a better way um, and have that, you know, we agree upon this baseline. Uh, and so that is a big opportunity for um, enterprises to be more efficient, transparent, and it's all based on data. So we want to make that easier for everybody. Um, right now, how enterprises come to agreements, they it's it's pretty pretty ridiculous. Everybody knows that. And so this is a Splunk's a data company, and this is going to generate some very valuable data. Thanks, Nate. Zach, you're next. Um, yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Zach. Uh, I'm the CTO of uh, Aztec. We're a privacy protocol for Ethereum. Um, and um, we develop um, snark based um, privacy solutions. And we're kind of, um, we're looking for, looking to baseline as an avenue for commercial adoption of our kind of our zero knowledge proving technologies of our snark technology. Um, and we, we're just very excited about the baseline project because we think it has great uh, prospects for uh, kind of the programmable uh, privacy uh, on mainnet. Thanks, Zach. Connor? Hey, everyone. Uh, Connor Svensson, founder and CEO of Web3 Labs. Uh, apologies, there's uh, building work happening in the house at the moment as well, which uh, <laughs> doesn't bode well for all everything else, but anyway. Um, yeah, so um, baseline that we, we we've been involved in the Ethereum space for a long time. It started off with Web three J, the JVM integration library for Ethereum, um, and we're really kind of building upon a lot of the work we've done in the last few years um, with the focus on our Epros platform, which really is uh, an on ramp for you know developers and sort of like ops teams and so on to get work working with um, blockchain based technology as easily as possible. We're about to. Um, launch um, um, you know a significant offer that just removes a lot of the barriers and is very much so focused on getting people developing on top of um, you know public ethereum networks hence there's a really nice synergy there when we're talking enterprise um, with baseline and um, you know having a a root and compelling business use cases for them to actually interact with them because we we really believe in adding value for um, you know really SMEs and business for to get them on board. There's a lot of people doing great work getting developers on board, but we think we can do more to help get more businesses on top and baseline slots really nicely into that. Right on, thanks, Connor. Um, uh, Stefan. Yeah, hello everybody. This is Stefan, CTO of Unibright, a German company, a blockchain integrator. So um, what we are doing is bringing uh, enterprises closer to blockchain. And that's also why we are so excited about the baseline protocol, because we think it may be one, if not the missing link uh, for enterprise adoption. So what we are doing, we are offering a visual no coding platform where you can... Um, visually defined business processes, generate code out of it and automatically integrate it into off-chain systems. And so our uh, idea of Baseline is, of course, uh, contributing to the public source, um, open source protocol, and at the same time developing our products mm -hmm. alongside it. Thanks, Stefan. And uh, well done on those. Uh, I think uh, you, you took first uh, blood on producing content that wasn't uh, from the original three companies. So. Uh, uh, well done on that. Um, uh, Kyle, uh, you also get, I should say, uh, first blood on code contribution, I think. So. Oh, there we go. Thanks, John. Uh, Kyle Thomas, uh, founder and CEO of Provide. Um, I built Provide uh, to blockchain-enable organizations, um, basically with a developer platform. Uh, I hate the word platform. Uh, call it a launch pad, really. Um, you know, it's, it's got an infrastructure APIs for, for AWS and Azure. Uh, it's got sort of core blockchain APIs uh, where you can, sort of, you know, Web3, if I, uh, your existing uh, legacy systems. Um, and I've been basically working on a, a product called Shuttle that's built on top of that. And then we obviously, you know, we found that um, enterprises didn't quite understand uh, how, to, how to take advantage of blockchain. So we were early. So we've basically been uh, building on top of our own platform a product called Shuttle that uh, leverages a lot of those APIs. Uh, and really, I, I, you know, I see this, the vision here for um, being able to baseline the baseline protocol, essentially, in terms of um, adoption and uh, you know, re really uh, getting, getting uh, early adopters going with experiments on Shuttle. So uh, it's been great to meet some of you guys already. Look forward to working with everyone. Right on. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Hudson, you're next. 
Hey everyone, um, I'm Hudson Jamison. I do security and community li liaison work with the Ethereum Foundation. And I'm really getting more and more excited each meeting with the main networking group and definitely going to get excited with these meetings because there's kind of been this rift and this distaste for enterprise within the Ethereum core community and within like the open source contributors to like Geth and other platforms like that, some, some within and outside the Ethereum Foundation. So people are skeptical, but now that we're moving toward working on mainnet, I think that that can change. And I see a future, hopefully, where a lot of the more crypto anarcho leaning people kind of realize that we need something like baseline for enterprise adoption of mainnet protocols, because otherwise we're not going to get as big as we need to. Um, as a whole platform, as Ethereum. So, um, yeah, I'm just hoping that things go well on this. I'm happy to be uh, contributing on the steering committee. Thanks, Hudson. And I, I, we're very glad that you're here. Um, it, it's hard to imagine having an impact with what we're doing without uh, a real connection to the Ethereum development community. Um, Johan. Uh, uh, Johan, are you there? Hey guys, yeah, I'm there, yeah. Hey, nice to see everyone, uh, really good to have this uh, first call. So I work at Chainlink, uh, mostly on the product management and kind of, you know, providing Ethereum applications, real world data. So for Chainlink, baseline protocol and the support we're bringing makes, you know, seems like a no brainer because our whole vision is bridging the Ethereum ecosystem and kind of the blockchain ecosystem to enterprises, to real world uh, use cases, right? So um, baseline is kind of a step and I think a huge step towards bridging that gap. And for Chainlink, we're super excited about the work being done here. Um, same every meeting we have and kind of every time we, we speak together, I think we'll have the same vision driving us. And I think this could be the beginning of some great stuff. So yeah, happy to be there. And, uh, it sounds like we're, we got a pretty good block forming right around uh, data and integration uh, with uh, your competencies and chain link, which are obvious and uh, some of the other, uh, other folks on the call. Um, right. Uh, uh, Karthik, I think you're next. My, my, my tiles shuffled themselves. So not yet. Yeah. Karthik. Yep. Uh, hello everyone. This is Karthik Solipuram representing EY, play the role of solution architect and researcher at EY. Uh, being on the one of the original authors of the uh, baseline protocol in the Radish demo, looking forward to get further adoption on this. My particular focus, or particular area of interest, would be the zk snark uh, technologies and scalability of baseline towards uh, more adoption in the Ethereum community, as well as uh, how we can scale this further to be adopted beyond Ethereum one daughter. Uh, Brian. Hi, uh, Brian Chamberlain, uh, engineer at Consensus, also one of the uh, core team, core developers of the baseline project to date. Um, worked on a lot of the messaging and architecture and sort of some of the, the protocol design for the system in the code base as it stands. Uh, looking forward to meeting everyone in the community and getting good feedback and looking for applications for this technology in different industries. Um, particularly interested in uh, building a more modular system and, you know, and composing an architecture that scales. Thanks, Brian. Um, I, I'd like to say that Brian and, and Kartik are probably uh, crucial resources for the short term in that uh, they, you know, uh, they say, uh, I've been trying to teach my six-year-old daughter, uh, good leadership is good listening. Um, uh, so listening to what we've already uh, done and then uh, taking it from there is a good way for us to make sure that we can maintain alignment and and uh, find our focal points as a community. Uh, we can you know fast take things in new directions, uh, but Karthik and, and Brian know the most about what the journey has been up until now. So uh, I encourage you to value yourself with their time as they can afford it. Yeah, um, we have Slack in the uh, we have a new dev channel we're going to create, so a lot of developer specific stuff. Right on, and I will we'll go into tools in a in a bit too to to go further into that. We have three guests, um, so uh, just briefly, we have York Rhodes uh, now and Joseph uh, Lubin, and we have uh, Dan Burnett. 
Uh, Dan, uh, would you like to start? Um, you're you're, um, you're a member, member of the PGB, so maybe you could give a brief uh, mention of that. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Um, I'm, uh, I do standards with consensus, and I'm on the project governing board for the, uh, Ether the OASIS Ethereum Open Project. Um, we're very excited to have this particular um, project within that group, the, uh, the baseline project, because it's, uh, it's really uh, it, just the interest in it is phenomenal, and I think it fits right squarely in the um, bailiwick of the Ethereum project at Oasis. So uh, thank you all. I'm mainly just going to be listening in, uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of great success here. Thanks, Dan. And as the person who probably knows more about standards work uh, than uh, many of us, uh, including myself, please uh, check our six if we miss uh, if we uh, misstep anywhere in this call. Uh, Joe? Hi, Joe Lubin from Consensus. Uh, we've been bringing any kind of interested party to the Ethereum technology since uh, POC 0 0.5 uh, before mainnet was launched. Um, we have been uh, particularly interested in bringing enterprise uh, to the use of the technology um, and eventually to the use of mainnet and uh, baseline represents a potential breakthrough for that. Thanks, Joe. Uh, and, and York, I, I'm pretty sure York has ceased to exist in the physical plane and uh, because the last few times he's, he's very digitized. Uh, so, um, no, so I'm working on digital all my, York, would you like to? All my digital skills are, are coming through. <laughs> Um, this is what happens with quantum computing meets AI, right? This is <laughs> so uh, I, I'd like to actually call out um, my uh, my key collaborator collaborator and who I also refer to as a mentor, Joe Lubin, who uh, I've worked with closely since 2015. So um, as uh, as he will readily uh, reply, probably. Uh, my enterprise education of, of his positioning of Ethereum uh, is, is, uh, has been critical as well. But um, it's an amazing journey. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really happy to see this particular part of this journey because I think this is a, you know, sort of critical spot and also critical need. So uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks, York. Uh, I'm John Wolpert. I'm your... Uh your uh, convener and uh, and uh, provisional chair until uh, we get out of bootstrapping mode, at which point hopefully I'll be voted out. Uh, uh, and uh, my my personal interest in this is, well, this is my, I think I'm the only person, at least senior person, whose uh, day job is nothing but this. Uh, I say that uh, winking at, at my boss, Joe, there, uh, to say, um, you know, um, I, I eat, sleep, and drink, making sure that the community gets running under its own power in a good way. Um, and so I'm at your service uh, for this and this alone. Um, the reason, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, our intention here is that, uh, as, as Joe said, there's, this is a real opportunity to activate all sorts of products and things that uh, other parts of uh, the company I work for, Consensus, um, is doing. Um, and... So we've got to get this right so that we can get those products right and find a path to great products on, on uh, enabled by the method. Um, so I work closely with a guy named Nick Criticos who is uh, actively looking for product opportunities. That's, um, that's the introduction phase. Thanks everybody. Um, looking at the agenda. Um, so, uh, I think I've already mentioned that you know, we want to contribute based on enlightened self-interest. So I encourage everybody to continue to think about that, articulate it to, to the community and can encourage others to do the same. Um, status. So very recap, uh, brief recap of current impact. Um, as of now, I haven't checked in the last few hours. It might, we might have just passed it, but this morning at about 4 AM, we were at 180 stars. Um, 35 forks and committers jumping on all the time. Um, after six months as a benchmark, and this is by no means uh, um, a haha. -ha, we got the you know we, we love our, our brothers and sisters at uh, Hyperledger Besu, but Besu has been running for six months. They have 185 stars um, and uh, about 100 or so 
uh, forks. This is 72 hours in that we, we're, we're talking about, you know, four days or uh, it's four days. Um, if we keep up that kind of pace, we're, uh, we're going to be <laughs> surpassing fabric and other things soon enough. Um, and that's a, that's a heck of a community. Uh, it strikes me that we have suddenly have an army and uh, we need to organize that, that uh, army in a decentralized way. Um, you've, everybody has already seen the, uh, the details on the, the press release. We got 1.2 billion um, in reach, 11 million in, in advertising equivalents. Um, I haven't seen that kind of thing in a long time. Maybe ever. I'm not sure. Um, Uh, metric. Yeah. So the question, one of the things that we should be looking at, and uh, I don't have an answer to this right now, is what what are our metrics? Uh, what what do we want to keep an eye on? What what matters? Nate, you you guys are great at anal analysis and, and finding finding the important things out of the data. So maybe uh, that's something you can advise us on uh, in future future meetings. Say so, you know what you know what 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 how do we figure out what signal is? When I was a CEO. Um, some time ago, uh, you know, the board, one, a board member taught me this. He said, you're going to keep your job as long as we think that you're looking at the right things. You know, you could be winning, you could be losing, but as long as we, if, if you could be winning and if we think you're looking at the wrong things, you're going to be out of a job anyway. I thought that was a very important way of, th of looking at things. So what should we be looking at as a, as a, t a steering committee it seems to be an important concept. Um, I'd like to go through tools very quickly. We are going to be heavy users of Slack. Um, does anybody have any concerns about that? Is everybody able, able to get on from their corporate uh, environments to the Slack channel? Has everybody been properly invited or do they need uh, us to invite their um, alternative um, email address, for, for example? I just have a question about that. Is this, um, is this a paid for version of Slack or are we going to have the scroll back monster eat it? us after 10,000 messages. Uh, currently, we, we've got uh, scroll back monster. Jory, you have a point? I was going to say, we'll, we'll be working to get the, uh, the paid version of, of Slack. And I also wanted to um, share that there's an auto inviter. Uh, so you can share that with colleagues, uh, not necessarily have to do the step of asking to invite someone. Right. If you go to the website, um, one of the first only couple of links on there is a pretty simple site right now. Um, We'll, we'll give you, get you that inviter. I haven't I, looked recent. Oh, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say our, our experience with Slack, even for community, they are not very good for pricing, even for very community oriented use cases. Um, so it, it yeah. may, I don't know if anyone's been through this rodeo before, but it can be quite the challenge. I love Slack. We use it, but it is very difficult and expensive for uh, communities. To things. Yeah. Fair point. Um, so, with this whole Slack thing, I think it's cool if the TSC is on it, but for the broader community, like I just looked through the baseline GitHub and we're already getting outside contributors who never even heard of baseline before, like uh, Weejo Key and Eva Balin <coughs> and others. So a place for them to stop by and ask questions would be cool. Do we have something like that right now? Because I have a proposition if we don't. Uh, fire away with your proposition. So basically right now, um, what I do when someone has like a new initiative, like we have something to, you know, update the EIP process, for example, what we do is we set up a Telegram channel and a Gitter channel, and then we bridge them using a software called MatterBridge. So basically you can uh, go in and um, uh, make it so that when someone talks on the Gitter side, it goes to Telegram and vice versa. So... I think that would probably be a good first step unless someone has a better um, idea for a first step. And it also kind of seems a little more organic that way, in my opinion, because it's not something that's like Slack's like very enterprise and paid for and that kind of stuff. So Hudson, can I ask really quick um, to better understand the problem to solve here? We want to make sure that folks who are asking questions on GitHub are getting the attention in a Slack channel, in some kind of chat channel, of the people who may be able to to solve that that problem. Is that the, the problem? Yeah, it's it's like to ask questions and get real time feedback, but also to build a community around it. So 
you kind of have these real-time chat channels rather than just the GitHub issues and PRs, which is purely for technical stuff, to like brainstorm with the community what good next steps are. This GitHub's not built for that. It's purely, I mean, you can you can make GitHub built for that. There are new tools and like a projects board and stuff like that, but it's I think it's better to have some kind of, just like all the other projects in the space, have Gitter, Telegram, and also Discord. Um, I think Eric just wrote Discord uh, is a good one too, and we can bridge to that as well. So basically you have one channel that goes over three chat platforms, and um, when you write in one, it goes to all the others, so it makes it easy for people to jump in. Yeah, and I'll, I'll agree that um, certainly um, Telegram is a great community generation tool and interaction tool. Yeah, and I can definitely set that up if there's anyone who's interested in, in getting that together. But I do want to wait and make sure that we have good feedback and we don't jump into it too quickly. Can I just yeah. add this discourse as well um, to, to the list too? Because it it's more traditional forum software, but um, there are like a number of folks who use discourse for their communities. And I, I think where, where you've got kind of static um, you know, questions, um, you know, it's, it's certainly very useful so people can almost have getting started or, you know, refer back to things that people have asked time and time again. Because, of course, the although historical search is there on a lot of the, um, you know, chat applications, that it's it's not as, um, you know, good as it's, uh, it's, it's not so good for seeing the historical stuff. I completely agree. And I love discourse for the long form stuff. So we would just need uh, someone to po spin up a server and, uh, get it on there, or they might have a paid version, but it's it's open source. You can just spin it up. Yeah, the the, the paid one's not prohibitively expensive if you don't want to do anything you know too fancy with authentication mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Right on. I'm gonna uh, I'll ca I'll call time on this particular subject if you don't mind. Uh, but sure. this is excellent. Um, I, may I propose that um, uh, Hudson and uh, Jory and I perhaps, unless anybody else would like to jump in. I'm just calling names. Um, so say, hey, wait a minute, you missed me. Um, wh why don't we take an action to do a spike um, and, uh, and come back to the team next time with, uh, with finals? And we'll stick with what we have until then, but then we'll make, uh, we'll make final determination about uh, uh, t uh, channels and modalities. Cool. Um, obviously, and, and let's send, set a principle down, right? You know, we, there's a dialectic between stuff people already have, making people you know, use stuff they don't have already have, getting to people that don't use the stuff that other groups have. And we are living in that age where, you know, we have this explosion of channels. Um, so it's a, it's a fascinating and interesting problem. Uh, I suppose a good one to have, in fact. Uh, but it's still... It is a problem. So um, and, yeah, Reddit, obviously, would go in there as well. Um, all good. So um, issues and tasks. So OK, so careful. We have an email missed uh, distribution list as well. So the two things that we have for now is um, um, uh, uh, the Slack and an email distribution list. If anybody's not on that, um, the TSC, where there's a TSC one, there's an SSC one, there's the general members list, which I think is approaching 400 people. Um, that means, of course, careful use of the email distribution list. Um, and I'll, I will argue, uh, I, I think it's almost QED, Jory, that um, the TSC, possibly the SSC, but certainly the TSC members would be the one, and it would be ones that get, um, that email that says approve or disapprove. Yeah, we can definitely make the TSC representatives moderators of the main baseline list. If anyone does not want that um, yoke around their neck, let us know. Um, so I get an email, and, and hopefully won't get a lot of them. Right, if we if we get the community understandings correct, um, folks will uh, will use it. I think that the argument is to use it only for like you know big meeting announcements and things like that where you need 300, 400 people to know the same thing. Otherwise, uh, yeah, Slack and whatever we come up with next. Um, GitHub issues and Zen Hub. So this, and this is fairly important. 
we have a Zen Hub uh, account full up, and um, we have a certain way of using Zen Hub that uh, I shall propose now. And if anyone wants to uh, uh, alter that, that's certainly something we can discuss. But I'll, you know, just for um, to get the, the ball rolling, this is the proposal, and it is that tasks. I'll, I'll actually bring up. I didn't have it up. I'll bring it up right now. Um, GitHub. Anybody uh, used? Uh, anybody not used ZenHub before? I haven't. It's pretty cool. Um, it has kind of a, a a a feature bug combo, which is or not bug, but uh, it has a data structure or it has a data. Um, it has a schema where where it has a new object called Epic, which I wish they didn't call Epics but it is a nestable object, right? So you can create epics within epics within epics within epics and then put an issue into it. You can't in GitHub without just doing general references do an issue within an issue within an issue. Um, and so this it makes epics nice for defining topics, creating projects, and then uh, nesting down into them, ultimately down into user stories and tasks or what have you. Um, I would propose that we use GitHub, which is the public repository for anything that we're doing seriously as an organization. It now has a pretty nice, even Gantt, Gantt style uh, road mapping tool, which it didn't have before. And you can create a specific project. Like I've got specifications task force. I was just fooling around with create a, a new project called, um, um, uh, TSC organizing uh, bootstrapping, let's call it. And, uh, and now we can add, we can add ep epics, um, from here. So, uh, I'm going to tell the, the, uh, the maintainers and, uh, everybody else uh, out there in during onboarding sessions that I'll talk about in a minute that, um, we use issues for basically engineering tasks and to-dos and chores. And those can be written in, in the format that we have uh, already in the, in the template. So if we go into, uh, you know, this is not written as a story and that's okay. Cause it's an issue. Um, usually we, you know, we like to encourage um, starting with an action verb. So do this, fix that, work on that. Um, and as we get going, um, most of them, unless they're chores, would be connected to an epic, which you can create in the standard GitHub uh, area. Um, and you can change it to an epic, or you can embed it in, in another epic. Um, so test and create that epic. And then we can, can uh, put any number of uh, uh, issues within that epic or other epics in that, within that epic. So that's nice. Um, that's all I want to say about that. I want to give a quick primer on it and, and make sure that everybody understands the, the baseline here is um, use epics for anything above a task. So if you have a user story or a, um, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, Joe needs this so that he can do that, which is the best way to write a story, right? A needs B so that C, um, and the, so that being the most important part that all gets, uh, um, plugged into, into epics. So you can have a story that sits within a topic. And I expect that the SSC will start um, having big project level topics or epics called, vertical industry X, vertical industry Y, and that sort of thing. And then uh, we'll, we'll use that for specifications as well. So you can use epics to specify, uh, to say, you know, thing must have messaging that does this. Messaging must have or shall have or must not have. So we can use that to define our specifications, which Connor, I thought you might like as a, as a method. Do you have any thoughts about this? I think it's yes, certainly with the, with regards to the specification ap approaches, um, and, and Dan Burnett, of course, can talk in a very extensively about this. But yeah, the, 
you know, you, you, using the must, um, should, and um, may uh, is certainly helpful and to, um, for, for, for doing this. Right on. So we have topics, um, which can go into specs and go into requ um, requirements, which are not the same. Um, and from there down into NFRs, functional, non-functional, and then down into tasks issues. So ideally every task would be connected to, uh, well, actually I missed some steps here, stories, um, would be connected to a story that has a so that. Usually that doesn't wind up happening, especially in a big community effort. It gets a little messy. Um, but I'll try to be vigilant on that. And anybody that's interested in helping out there, that'd be great. Um, any questions on that? I had one in chat real quick, but I think it got answered by Jory. Um, it was just that how easy is it for, for a community member who's contributing to sign up for this and like just scrim, uh, skimming through the docs, it looks like it's real easy. It's super easy and it's all, it's automatic. So uh, Jory has set it up so that, Zenhub pops for anybody that's on a browser. Great. You can also get the Chrome plugin, but it, yeah, you don't have, it's, it's not a private repo, so you don't have to buy it. It's free for public. Is that correct, Rory? Um, I'm so sorry. My, my husband just had to ask me a question. Um, would you please repeat that? Well, not at all. Uh, and we all understand very much. Um, uh, it's going to happen to all of us. <laughs> uh, the, the question was, uh, do we have a, uh, so Zen Hub is free for everybody, right? Yeah, uh, that, that's a, we, we're an open source project and, and Zen Hub um, provides, um, for, for nonprofits doing open source, um, provides resources. So thank you, Zen, Zen Hub. Right. One pro tip there is that the epic object in Zen Hub is not in GitHub. There is no object, there's nothing to contain that object in GitHub. So when you when you do when you're doing ZenHub op, and that it actually has some nice features to it because not having it in GitHub means you can you're not cluttering up GitHub with that necessarily with the, from the engineering perspective but you can use it for a lot of good project management and that sort of thing. Um, so I'll move on from there. We're going to review governance next and 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 we have an action item really which is is to. Uh, uh, the only real big action item for today is to seed the maintainers um, with folks. We can ha we will follow this up next time with another round of this um, because you know the, the the ask for everyone is to go and find you know maintainers, uh, make sure that you've you've got a good set of maintainers, and that uh, uh, we, I've, I've made a call to action for for the community to step up to be maintainers, but I don't think that they've had the the, the, the time or opportunity to really absorb that call to action. So we'll give them one more round. Once we've done these two meetings on this, the maintainers will add more maintainers. So I'll go over to the government governance document. Has anybody not seen the governance document? Anybody not seen this? Has anybody not been able to go onto the docs.baseline-protocol.org? If you haven't, uh, do that. It's, I, you know, we've spent a good amount of time. I think it's, it's a work in progress, but I think it's got some good stuff. We've got our community members here. And we have governance here. And in that, we have, uh, this is the official, I guess, the official version, Jory. At least it should be. Yes, it should be. Uh, we'll maintain that here uh, so everybody can see it. And there are just a few basic rules. One is that we, um, uh, we will determine the initial maintainers and the number of maintainers required to merge a contribution. I'd like to open that question right now, which is um, we have initially set it to three by default. And... I would think it would be a very appropriate thing for somebody to say, are you crazy? It should be two or what have you. So uh, does anybody, I'll start the bidding. 
Anybody feel that that needs to go down or up? Arguments? Just to comment that uh, the rationale here was that this was the minimum number. Um, we can always require, you know, we can always um, request or suggest more, but this is, um, this is essentially what would be enforced. Correct. By um, GitHub. That's right. And, and um, I think in, in general, good practice would suggest no, no fewer than two, right? Uh, but uh, we can go down to two or we could go up. My right. concern is that if someone is going to the, you know, zero knowledge part of the repo and submitting a change, because that's actually one of the issues pulled up right now, do we have people like in this steering committee who have an expertise in that who'd be able to review um, that, like if they do a pull request on this? That is a really good question. And it, ha it, com it speaks to an interesting issue we had with uh, the docs as well. We had a docs branch. I think we're just going to merge that into master and, and change the, the way we do do that. But we started with a docs branch that can have its own, um, you know, um, settings for that. Right. Um, so you're saying. Yeah. If you go to the issue I just posted from Ouija co um, who's an excellent, excellent researcher and, uh, is doing the semaphore uh, initiate or what's it called? The semaphore like initiation process. Basically, there's a problem with something to create. Yeah, I can't even describe it, and that's the problem. <laughs> right. So, so Hudson, um, the maintainers don't actually have to be experts, but they do have to know who the experts are. Right. So. If they themselves are not experts, as long as they are able to reach out to a sufficiently broad number of other experts to review, um, then the maintainer's job is to watch the conversation and see if there is agreement among those who are experts. Okay, that sounds good. Um, yeah, and I'd like to chime in. I, 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 can, I can also review uh, zero knowledge. Um, oh, yeah, Zach, you're on the call. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Aztec's bad, badass, so yeah, I can, I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah, guys, with Brian here, one of the we talked about but we haven't implemented yet, if we could, or leave it kind of open is obviously, so GitHub provides the ability to, uh, you know, flag or require certain reviewers on certain areas of the code base or certain you know, libraries or file types, that kind of thing. Um, you could potentially do something like that to ensure someone with technical knowledge reviews it, but um, we didn't add that in yet. So we can discuss if that's something we think is valuable. Okay, well, that, that question is solved for me. I'm good. Um, yeah, let, I'll tell you what, why don't we start with the simplest version of that, which is we teach maintainers how, um, how to be maintainers uh, in, in onboarding sessions, which is something I'll, I'll mention in a few minutes. Um, and, and, and principle number one for the maintainers is this one right here. Don't need to be expert, uh, need to be good listeners, need to be uh, good at, you know, uh, enabling the community to, to do its job, right? So, yeah, if, if uh, Brian is maintaining and, um, and uh, uh, you know, it's something on ZK, he, could, he, can, he can do the merge, but he might want to call Zach, right? That sort of thing. Um, do we, shall we keep it at that simple simplicity level or shall we do a spike on figuring out how to do accommodations? I think, that I, think sounds, it, I think that sounds good for now. Yeah, I was going to say people tend to use their common sense as well when it comes to reviewing pull requests. If it's kind of, you know, if, if they're out of depth, then I think they'll yeah. try to pull someone in. Okay. Um, so I've got one action here uh, or one ask of the, of, of the, of the group and that is, um, you know, maintainers, um, people with the ability to merge, um, they have a crucial role in terms of focus and not turning this into blockchain porridge, which is what we worried about uh, a few projects I've been involved with. So, um, you know, there's this you loose type blockchain, what, John? blockchain porridge, right? Or blockchain soup, you know, just becomes a mess. Um, uh, okay. 
you know, it all, it, there's this balance between, you know, going out too soon, too late, and you never know if you got it right until after the fact. Uh, we've got just enough code that people seem to understand and, and, and enough articulation that people get the general idea. Um, uh, and now, you know, the question is, will we all run amok or will we come together into some kind of focused activity? And uh, the maintainers have an, a crucial role in this. So uh, what I'd like to propose is that uh, one or two or three people have the, uh, take the responsibility of doing a, an actual onboarding session for every new maintainer where they take them through things like don't have to be an expert. Here's how you do this. Um, and we have some experts about being maintainers on this call. So who'd like to step up and, and take that ask? Uh, hey, this is Brian. I mean, I, I'm interested. I'd like to think about that as a process for onboarding new maintainers for a little bit and then come up with what we think they might want that experience to be like um, before committing to, you know, to doing it and maybe bring it back to the community. Yeah, I second that. Uh, call me interested. Do we need it to be an actual session or can we have guidelines and you know, ask yeah. people to review yeah. guidelines? Guidelines can help us quite a bit. And again, there's machinery in GitHub that can kind of reinforce that. And then with you know, whatever chat platform we're on, you know, we can start to do that. So it could be kind of a community where we all are, as long as we're all on the same page about what the uh, guidelines are, at least on some loose level. We can all do it, at least in some part, um, as we interface with new folks who want to contribute. Um, at least that's my initial thought. Uh, a video actually is a good idea. I mean, maybe there's a short, less than five minute kind of review we could put together, but I think that would probably start with in you know the contributor guide. You see a lot of that you know, language and those concepts kind of framed. The video just might be another way to consume it. And then you know, people come into the forums, the chat, then we can link them to the document or the video. Like, it kind of evolve organically. And that'd be the best way to go. Terrific. Um, thank Brian, thanks for stepping up on that. And I know that uh, uh, Karthik probably would uh, want to, but I think in, in, in his role with the NY, it's, it, it, it's probably... Uh, wise for him to to stay back on that one particular thing um although i think he'll he'll be an incredibly important uh, resource for folks um so I, I think maybe one other person um uh might want to be involved on that um eric i'm just reading your thing uh i we understand i'm and i'm sorry that you, you you got the diagnosis um uh, so, uh, but yeah, I think, uh, we can, we can keep it at two for now. Um, does anybody else have any, uh, questions, comments, uh, um, things to add about maintainers and getting into the work? Okay. Um, if no one else does it, I'm going to be doing regular office hour style onboarding sessions for anybody maintainers or otherwise who want to, you know, so if anybody wants to jump into the work and get a, um, a lay of the land, I'm going to do once or twice a week, uh, video taped onboarding sessions using the whiteboard, just like this and showing, you know, at least what I know others can, can do the same, can do their own, can help, uh, or can, can jump on and do it. Uh, uh, ride ride together on them. Uh, I will announce the times that I'm doing them. Um, that's just something, again, it's my day job, so I have the time. I'll make the time to do it. It's not everybody's day job, so it may not be for everybody. But if you're interested, uh, reach, reach out to me after the call. Uh, we will be doing uh, on, onboarding sessions uh, of various kinds, and we'll tape them all so that we have a nice uh, video library. Uh, apparently, we have an army of people who are ready to do things like edit our videos 
for free. So that's pretty nice. Um, they are called Link Marines, generally. Uh, the Link Marines, you got to love those guys. <laughs> you know, um, they have passion. Uh, you know, we just stay out of conversations about cryptocurrency. Um, right. Uh, and and uh, uh, Mr. Eid, uh, the, thank you for bringing that community f with us. Um, okay, so that's that. Let me to kick back over messaging ZK special topics. Um, yeah, so the work ahead, uh, key technical topics, messaging, zero knowledge, integration and data, and then special topics like ensuring we're not wrong about how we uh, prevent double execution using the, uh, the, the uh, baseline proof, which if you've been following along is uh, in the demo. Um, and it's one of the ways that uh, two POs, for example, can't both calculate from the same starting state. Um, uh, you know, that's a big claim. We better be right. And it would probably be good for somebody to spike that. So there's all sorts of work like this. It is not the job of the TSC to be the sole um, uh, planners of such work, of course. But it, at this end, um, it, it is also not verboten that the t folks on the TSC uh, uh, work on, on such things. So um, as we bootstrap the community, I'd like to encourage everybody to start developing that list for themselves, um, posing it again uh, right here in, in, uh, in GitHub. Be brave. Don't worry about putting stuff in that people might, uh, uh, you know, be confused about. Um, uh, and, and again, if you do it in the epics, uh, you're not really cluttering up the actual GitHub. And yeah, so those I, I don't I don't want to go into that too much today because we don't, we don't have we have a, an hour and this is our kickoff. But I think that this is where a lot of the work's going to happen. And it leads to the other thing I wanted to, we, we wanted to talk about today, which is ideas for, or, for the community organizing itself around the work. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on, you know, Stefan, um, you have a lot of ideas about this. Uh, Johan, you also do. Um, and then we have some real uh, old hands and experts at um, coordinating uh, and, and leading groups of people that can't be led. I'll, I'll just quickly say that yeah, I used to play this game uh, Eve Online years ago, and it was MMORPG. And you know, it's it's the I think the foundation of ghosting because you could just disappear and not do the work, but uh, the, everything in the game is made by players and there's a lot of drudgery. And uh, I remember seeing a young a young person. Uh, coordinating a 1200 people to build a big space station and uh, getting them to do stuff like mine things for hours and hours. And uh, when, when they could all just disappear, well, in a way it's kind of like that for us you know, we, we've got to motivate and, and help lead uh, a group of people that don't have to do a thing around this. And uh, so there's an art form to that. Does anybody have some thoughts about, how we uh, how we go forward with that, and thanks, Jory, for the time check. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll spend the last five minutes on this, and then we're done. Yeah, just a short note, perhaps. I think it's always, um, especially in the bootstrapping phase, it's very important to know who the audience is. And my feeling is that with all the news that have been made around uh, the baseline uh, launch and uh, the repo going public, mm, that there are clearly two two target audiences, uh, those who are really interested in uh, coding stuff and developers, and um, I think it's quite easy to motivate them in the bootstrapping phase. And there perhaps is uh, another audience that is more interested in the long-term um, yeah, effects that something like a baseline protocol has. And I just want to bring up the, the idea that it's 
that it's important not to address um, the second audience too early because the expectations are already high. And uh, I think the most valuable input for the, for the uh, bootstrapping phase is to motivate as many uh, developers and um, code contributors and maintainers as possible to ensure that the uh, yeah, transition from, from Radish to the uh, initial uh, version of the baseline protocol is successful and then tackle the, the wider audience um, perhaps in a second step. It's my uh, feeling that we uh, learned from the experiences of um, including a public community into development-centric processes. Thanks, Stefan. Any other, uh, any other thoughts on that? As a, as a practical matter, we have to figure out what kind of uh, uh, meetings, events, um, and you know, what, what is the program of activities? And that, that, I think that, that is the, the, the thing to, to really accomplish this week, even before the next meeting, which we do have to set before the top of this. So very quickly, I'll say, um, be thinking about things that we can do to generate, to create within the next week, a, uh, a starter pack for a program of activities. I've got some ideas, but I'd really like to hear from you guys. Um, and I, I will take the job of collecting everybody's thoughts and, and putting it back together. Um, so program of activities, um, and Hudson, I mean, you, you know a lot about this. Um, so I'll, I'll call you on this. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Then the last thing to do is, uh, is decide when our next meeting should be. Um, is it, is that, does anybody object to this doing one meeting a week later? And then going to two weeks and then going to a month as we get into a steady state. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, same here. All right. So I'll call I'll call one next week and we'll I'll put up uh, a Jory and I'll put up a, um, a uh, one of those um, things that we did last last time. So will we stick to Mondays for, for now? Does anybody object to that? We could just say same bad time, same bad channel uh, next week. That sounds all right, good to me. All right. So let it, let it, unless uh, reserve the right to, uh, to change it if, if there are major reasons why it can't be this time next week, but otherwise uh, let's assume next, this time next week. Any, any parting thoughts, shots, questions, comments? Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Great meeting. Thank, Thank you. Good job, John. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. See you.